Hello everyone, this is Zebo and welcome to this AFK journey video. So for those of you guys who just chance upon this video because you're looking out for content for AFK journey, welcome to the channel. For those of you guys who have been supporting me ever since I started releasing content videos for AFK journey, I really appreciate it as well. So I'm Zebo. I've been playing AFK journey for quite a while, ever since about four or five months back in the Pioneer testing server and with AFK journey global server closely upon us, right? On the 27th of March. We're going to release a whole slew of content on the channel with regards to beginner's guide, tier list, like a bunch of advanced guides, hero reviews, as well as in-depth analysis with regards to the different aspects of the game. So if you guys are interested in all those contents, if you guys like what you guys see today, do remember to drop a like and subscribe. Really appreciate it. And with that, let us begin today's video. Let's go. Yo, everyone. Welcome to this uh, tier list video. So today's video will be talking about the ultimate tier list a global release by myself which combines all my experience about the late game metas the late game different game modes best teams best units as well as my knowledge about the game from different players spenders free to play players from the early to late game so uh, that's why i call it the ultimate tier list because it's a lot of information and lots of hours of playing to get to this tier list and then i also know that there's actually other tier lists that are already available i'll say that the more reliable ones are Print wins tier list which is available for the public already so in that tier list i give some of my opinions but mostly they have their own writing teams that uh, are very dedicated to push out such contents for different games so they support many other titles so you guys can refer to that as well and we have another one which is by analytica so this uh, analytica is basically my um, afk journey guild like uh, there are a bunch of afk arena players which uh, delivers quality afk guides and content so I'm going to cover both the other tier lists as well moving forward so you guys have a better understanding as to how the different groups of players think the, the, the meta is like, right? The pool of unit is like. But in today's video, it's my personal opinion, my personal experience with all the different uh, meta understanding, team building, as well as the best cons for the different game modes. So without further ado, let's start with introducing my own tiering system. So my tiering system is not your, your standard S tier, A tier, B tier, etc, etc. I'm, I'm not going to tell you how strong a unit is, but rather I'm going to tell you how strong the unit can be, how strong the unit can become in the late game. Because I see AFK journey as a, a game where at the start certain units can be really weak, but if you're willing to put in time to develop in them, if you're really putting in effort to develop your teams and be as efficient as possible some of these units can become heroes they can be really good units they are meta units so uh, my tier list will be as such right we have five categories generally meta so this tier is basically units that they are really good they are the the cream of the crop for the different game modes like when you think of a damage dealer for this game mode you think of these units when you think of like support this unit when you think of tank it's this unit so these units they are just basically good from the start to the end and investing in them basically you won't go wrong right they are generally meta units so you'll always be able to find a place and time to use them really really good units then we have zero to hero which is units which could be stronger than meta units by the way so the reason why they're in zero to hero is because at the start of the game at the early game or even the mid game some of these zero to hero units they are just very very weak they are they are not good and people might have the misconception that hey they are useless but once this unit unlocks their ascension skills once this unit unlocks their ex skills once you get the stats of this unit going up this unit becomes necessary for different game modes they become meta for different game modes and you basically see them running around at the highest level of gameplay in afk journey itself so that's why they are known as the zero to heroes and then we have a uh, decent units so units this is basically like a tier downgrade from generally meta like units in this tier basically do their job really well they work in specific situations and they are very usable they they are they are usable if you don't have the meta units if you don't have the zero to hero units and you you maybe need a unit to fill in the void and you have this decent pool these units are decent so that's why they are in this pool decent but they're not the best right you have better options but if you don't have the better options you can use the decent units so if you're somebody who's a value player investing in any units in these three tiers generally meta zero to hero as well as decent um, basically you won't go wrong like you will be able to find a place and time to use these units and you won't regret you won't regret it right in the long term 
So last two, we have um, the Hero to Zero as well as the Walker tier. So Hero to Zero, right, basically is the tier where the units start off really, really strong, but moving into the late game, they see substantially less use. You basically don't see people using them. They are not good in any game mode in the late game. And either that or they simply fall off in the meta in the late game. Like this pool of units, they... They have a good start, but they don't end really well. So that's for Hero to Zero. Then we have the Walker tier. So these pool of units, basically, they are not good anytime, right? They are not good at the start. They're not good at the mid game. They're not good at the late game. And generally, you don't see people using them. And Walker is one of the key representation for this pool. So that's why he's uh, here and he's the warm up for this tier called the Walker tier. So yeah, if you kind of want to avoid like making mishaps, going the wrong step, then I think avoiding the walker tier is the way to go. So that's how the tier list works. And with that, let us move on to the actual content. Let's go. Okay, so I'll start with the lowest tier first, which is known as the walker tier. So basically units that are just generally not good and you shouldn't invest in them. So obviously walker is part of them. So walker is this assassin unit that puts a bounty on the target and then he's able to stun them. He's able to do damage to them. But I think the key problem with Walker is that he's a range unit that attacks at the melee range and his attack speed is not even that fast. And if you talk about his damage numbers, it's not really high and the buff he provides is a more single target based buff for himself but not the team. So generally from a start to the end, you simply don't see people using him because a rogue characters, they are generally really frail. But Walker walks up like a man, like a man with a moustache, like he is, and he just dies really easily. So in the early game, not good. In the mid to late game, nobody uses him. So he's in the Walker tier, the golden representation. So obviously, we have our dear Chirpy and Hemi. So these two units, they are basically um, like uh, not used anywhere, obviously, because you can't upgrade them. They are beginner hamsters. You're not going to get anything out of them. Like, don't bother. You can try to use them for contents, obviously, but... Uh, you're gonna have a really hard time because uh, they don't you can't agree with their tiers so whatever you're getting in terms of stats is whatever you're getting even into the late game the only thing that you'll get is an increase in stats from levels but not the increase in stats from like increasing the tiers so that's one major problem these two units have and also their skill itself is uh, relatively the basics so uh, yeah, you're not gonna, basically you're not going to get anywhere with the two of them, even if you try to invest in the long term. But I don't think you can invest too much in them because you can't even tear them up in the first place. So that's why they're in the Walker tier. Then we have a fourth unit in the Walker tier, and that is none other than Atalanta. So I think Atalanta has potential. This unit, uh, by the way, you guys will see a lot of light bringer here, right? So Atalanta has a lot of potential to be a sniper, to be a damage dealer. But there are other really powerful damage dealers running around in the Lightbringer tier. And Atalanta has a little bit of RNG where she jumps around to fire her ultimate or her whip, like hitting um, like different targets based on where she positions. She has a little bit of disable, but she's just not like exceptionally good in every any other game mode, right? Like she's decent on paper, but they're just units that do what she does and does it better. So if you compare her with the other units that I'm going to mention in the higher tiers, she just doesn't do much. Like she's a jack of all trades, but she's not even that good of a jack in the first place. So that's why she's down here. And then uh, we have a uh, walker tier. Let's see. Faye. Okay, so I personally think that Faye is a unit that has potential. But after many months of testing, after um, like many months of seeing the different metas i don't think anyone actually uses Faye as a healer because the healers i'm going to introduce right before before i continue moving i'll say the healers in this game right or the other healers in other tiers that are available they are all very high up in the other tiers right so i'm, I'm, I'm gonna put like the best healers on top first and um generally Faye basically doesn't have a slot because you just have so many other meta healers out there. Like you have Heroin, you have Smokey. They just do healing better. Like why invest in Faye when you have the other meta healers? And on top of that, you have other zero to hero meta healers as well. Right? You have units like Rowan, which is also a good healer. You have units like Damien, that is a zero to hero type of healer. So generally, when you come to healing, when you think of healing, Faye won't be the first one and she won't be the one that you 
want to develop unless you are somebody who strictly want to play Lightbringer which isn't honestly that good in the first place so that's why uh, Faye is in the walker tier I don't recommend people to develop her and then we have the next unit which is Kafra. so this unit is a uh, swordsman in the wilder's faction I think the biggest issue with Kafra is that he's very physical based but the physical side of wilder is not really strong so when you think about a uh, debuffer right you think about uh like kruger for example and there's another unit that does way better than him and that is our dear kruger over here this wolf man i'm gonna put him side by side so you guys know who i'm talking about so kruger right kruger as a unit basically is also a physical debuffer similar to kafra and he also does damage so kruger does it way better than kafra and so if you're thinking about like finding somebody who is a debuffer you're finding somebody who is a physical side damage dealer and debuffer then Kafra will never be somebody you think about because Kruger exists and there are a lot of other amazing buffers and debuffers in the game so obviously Kafra is not going to get a placing and on top of that I think a lot of the really powerful Wilders unit which I'm going to talk about later they are all magic based so Kafra simply doesn't have synergy with them and that's why he's in the walker tier because in the early game he's not strong he's not good he doesn't have any defensive capabilities and in the late game he just doesn't have synergy in terms of team building so that's for Kafra then uh the other I'll say like uh the the other unit which I'll put in the walker tier is Salazzo so I believe some people might disagree with me I I'll say Salazzo could be maybe uh hero to zero but I personally don't see anyone even using Salazzo in the, the early game. So that's why I'm going to put him in the Walker tier. So for you to qualify as a hero to zero is when people actually invest in you in the early game because you are really strong and you have certain advantages. But in the mid to late game, you start to fall off, right? For, for Salazzo, I do think that he has early game potential. His kit has a good numbers and optimal like uh, control there. And I also think that if uh, he has some sort of defensive capabilities, this unit could even be meta because Salazzo is a swordsman that is able to control the enemy, to stun them, to pin them on the floor and then do damage to them based on their HP. Very, very optimal looking kit, but there's just way more disgusting, powerful Graveborn units in the pool right now. And Salazzo just doesn't cut it. Like he, he's not, he's not very good like he won't be a top priority and he doesn't have synergy with some of the beasts in the meta so when you come up when you think about team building you won't think about him and he doesn't excel at any game mode particularly so like he basically is not a unit you would think of if you do decide to uh use him right i i strongly don't recommend people to use him um i actually want to put one more unit here uh that is uh, lumon so yeah, Lumon tier. Actually, Lumon deserves his own tier as well. So Lumon, this rhinoceros unit over here, he has, uh, I'll say, like pretty tanky stats. Like his numbers look really good. But Lumon's issue is with his kit. Like his kit sounds really good on paper, but late game wise, he doesn't survive very well as a tank. And control wise, he's a little bit random. So He's going to be running all around, not surviving very well. And you just have better tank options out there. In fact, in the late game, the tank options are pretty much manipulated by two units, which I'm going to talk about in a generally meta st uh, status. So that's why Lumon is over here. Like, don't invest in him. Like, he is one of, if not the worst unit together with our dear Walker in terms of usage. Like, at least for Azarenta, uh, Fey. Uh, Kafra as well as Salazzo. I think if you really force your way to use them, they can be used in certain situations. Very, very, very niche situations. But Lumon and Walker, they are basically the worst. <laughs> they, yeah, they are, they are not very good. So that's for the Walker tier. And let us move on to the Hero to Zero tier. So the very first unit is that is in the Hero to Zero tier is none other than Valen. So for Valen's case, I'll say... Is the prime example of this tier because you get a few shots of him in the early game which allows you to tear him up and being a unit that is able to do aoe damage that is able to stun and self boost his own attack he looks really decent on paper and him having the like um, tutorial shots to give you better stats might make him seem really strong but as you move forward into the mid to late game 
he lacks defensive capabilities so in most cases before he even uses his ultimate he just dies really quickly right in arena in terms of uh other damage related game modes like dream realm per se you have other units that just do way more damage than him or has some sort of defensive capability while being able to do damage so that's why Velen is definitely not gonna be your first pick in terms of damage dealer in the late game and yeah like if you're investing in him then it's probably for his looks because uh, his usage and utility in the mid to late game is just really pathetic then we have Mirel. so Mirel's case is similar to Velen like uh great aoe damage great damage potential but doesn't have any defensive capabilities and on top of that i think Mirel's ultimate is way slower than Velen. i think the only saving grace for Mirel, if you do want to use her in other game modes is better drill in terms of the like uh decent tier but i'll just put her in hero to zero because Mirel, i feel that is a unit that gives new players the impression that she's going to be really strong in the early game but the thing about her is that her ultimate just costs a lot of energy although it delivers really good effect that and is able to deal massive aoe damage but you need to build a environment you need to build a surrounding for you to use her for you to maximize her so i wouldn't recommend people that don't have that much resources to invest in her because there are other units that do her job but slightly better or way better and you can use them in way more game modes than her so for Mirau's case I think in the late game you can definitely use her for better drills but definitely not a top priority because you're better off putting your resources in other units that are usable in other game modes and that's I'll say like uh, the caveat for Mira. she does have a late game game mode that you can try to use her in but they are just better units and she's not good all around in terms of every other thing like the only thing she's good at is doing aoe damage so that's why she's here she's good in the early game but she falls on in uh in terms of the mid to late game portion so that's why i put her in the hero to zero tier so the third unit here is brutus so brutus was one of my favorite units because he is my primary tank in the my first run through of the game he does his job really well in terms of uh tanking up for the team right he has a taunt ability which draws attention to himself he has a five second invulnerability so when he drops below a certain percentage of hp he basically locks his hp and doesn't die for five seconds and his control immune and he also has an aoe spin ultimate which deals decent damage in the early game but basically falls on the late game and he also has a like a torn defensive debuff ability so he can use him as a debuffer as well or physical defense debuff but for Brutus case right like yeah he just falls off a lot I, I don't know why but in the mid to late game portion like once you, you basically once you're done with a story once you are done with the part where you use him to tank right you don't use him in other game mode I don't know why as well like his kit looks good but I attribute it to him being a jack of all trade right but master of none and also I attribute it to the other tanks just being way more overpowered the other tank just being so useful and way better than him so in terms of tanking up right in terms of doing the tank job he just falls off and as a warrior unit he he doesn't do that much damage compared to some of the like warrior units i'm going to introduce later so he's just not good anywhere like he does i'll say like a little bit of everything like he does debuff but not as good as some of the meta debuffers he does damage but not as good as some of the meta warrior units and he does tank but he's just not as good as the meta tank so like he is in a very awkward position with really powerful early to mid game but he just falls off a lot moving forward so that's why he's in this hero to zero tier and then the fourth unit i'm gonna put here right give me a moment let me find the picture for this unit yes Laika. okay pretty unfortunately right Laika is one of those units which are really good in the early game with haste buff attack speed buff as well as decent damage aoe damage and also a debuff for the enemy from the ultimate physical defense so you're thinking hey this unit is really good in terms of uh, being a utility semi carry unit right but it's it's the opposite like in the late game i think in a lot of situations you just don't find a slot for Laika because of uh, two reasons right so for the wildest faction Laika belongs to a wildest faction with the green background for the wildest faction they have really powerful units but these units they are strictly 
I'll say like magical damage focus. So physical damage dealers or physical damage debuffers like Kafra, Laika, their value is not as high. Can you use Laika? Definitely. I think in certain situations, you can definitely try to slot her in. But they are just, I'll say like generally better units that does her job or rather um, goes better in the different comms compared to her. She's really good in the early game, by the way, in the mid game as well. But I, I simply don't find a lot of people running her because I think the issue is, like I mentioned, mainly is because of the teams. So Laika definitely has the potential to become decent and maybe even generally meta because I sincerely feel that this unit is really strong from the early to mid game. But late game wise, it just feels very awkward to use her. Like there's just not a lot of, play a lot of player using her and her usage really just dipped a lot. So she is also the prime example of hero to zero because she gives you the impression that she's this very very powerful buffer this all around powerful unit that you can use in multiple game modes but in actual fact in the late game builds in the most optimal team setups nobody is using her in the late game so that's why she's right here hero to zero can you still invest in her i do think so in fact if uh you don't consider the meta if you just consider like you know just having a team and you want to have a debuffer and you want to use her she can actually be in a decent tier personally but i think she is one of those examples where in the early game her kit is really amazing but her kit somehow just falls off i also don't know how to explain it but basically nobody runs her for her kit in the late game like that's just how like zero she is there and i think in the future if there's a need for like buffing i think if units like Donnell rise up or units that appreciate her buff rise up or units that appreciate physical defense deep buff in the Wilders faction then she will definitely rise up but she is the prime example where she has overall really good kit but in the late game not as many team wants to use her and overall becoming really meh in the late game so what the prime example of hero to zero as well and there's one more unit which I'm kind of conflicted whether I want to put here but I have uh, decided not to put this unit here. So the unit is actually Niru. But I personally will say Niru is much better than people put this unit to be. This unit actually has pretty decent burst heals. And uh, in the late game, right, the ability to keep your units in the spirit state actually draws out the battlefront. So he is actually really decent. So like, I wanted to put him here. But uh, like it's I sort of feel that mm, maybe it's not the right place for him so that's why he's here so yeah i think in terms of hero to zero these are the prime units for example right yeah like i think these are the prime units for example so i don't think there's any other units which i feel they are really good in the early game but they fall off so i will say that's that right let me see okay if there's one unit which i feel that um can go in this tier will be Duanel. So I'm going to put one Celestial here. Like, I'm going to explain why. So I think Duanel as a unit, like, it's really powerful on paper. But this unit, right, Celestial slash Hippogen, by the way, there's four units. So we have, uh, I'm going to remove uh, Nero here. So I'm just going to put them in the decent tier so you know who, you guys know who I'm talking about so we have these four units we have skalita so i'm gonna put them in order skalita duonel barrel as well as reina so um these units right they are your celestial slash hippogen unit so your gods slash demons unit and they are really powerful right don't get me wrong they are really good and they have really good kids but i think the issue with duonel right the reason the reason why I'm putting him here, in fact, okay, I, I'll say I'll put Donnell in decent. Like, it's questionable for Donnell because Donnell is expensive and he requires quite a lot of team building to build around. So he is somewhere in the middle, I'll say, but probably decent because in the late game, I did see some really powerful Donnells running around and his kit is very future-proof where in the future, okay, so I'm just going to talk about briefly, uh, Donnell's kit briefly, right? So you guys know what I'm talking about. So Donnell is an AoE range damage dealer that's able to reposition himself to do the best AoE damage and he gets a lot of attack buff as well as positive buff when he's buffed by the ally. So you want to have as many buffers for him as possible, but a lot of the buffers, they, they don't have synergy. 
and generally they are not really good for the meta so that's why Donnells is in a really awkward position where he's really strong on paper if you do invest in him there's definitely people using him in the late game but you require a lot of resource and the teams that you can build him with they are not the strongest so that's the the problem with him and a lot of people that are using him to great success they are mega whales and they are playing with a lot more stats than others so if i were to group him with another unit at equal stats he honestly might not be even that good so that's why i was contemplating whether he's here or here but i think the 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 thing that has it going for him is that if you do get him going he's quite sick uh that's why I, I say he's decent like he does decent damage and him being able to reposition can actually win you games in arena being able to like pick off enemies at the right place and right time so that's why I, I guess he's here right not the hero to zero so i guess hero to zero part would be this unit per se okay so next we'll be moving on to the decent tier so for this tier there's gonna be a lot of units i'm just gonna group some of the units together and talk about them all together so first we have the two tanks from the mauler as well as the light bringer faction lucius and, and, and tendra so lucius is this uh light bringer guy over here and tendra is this uh, mauler female tank over here so these two units generally really solid tanks they can shield your team they can taunt the enemy they can heal your team in lucia's case lucia's also has attack down and tendra has a damage reduction buff on one ally when the hp is low so in general these two units serve their job really well as a tank but uh yeah that's that like they, they are just decent tanks so in terms of the tank position there are other meta units which i'm going to talk about later so i'm going to group the two of them right here so that's for lucius as well as Antendra. so generally early mid to late they are decent you can use them late game wise if you don't have a tank you want to use them it's possible but just take note that they are not the most meta they are not the strongest unit that you will think of when you think about meta that's all but they are definitely usable so that's for the two tanks the next we'll talk about the aoe damage dealers so um okay i'm going to talk about Tamasia here so Tamasia is in a weird spot where it i think Tamasia is more of a disruptor slash damage dealer more than a tank because Tamasia as a tank is not exactly that tanky like this unit basically right what she does is she'll run, run around the map and then she's gonna jump and then do some mini stun and then do damage and she also has a debuff so late game this unit has a niche in one of the Dreamion bosses which is known as necro drake so i'm gonna save that for another day so this unit in the late game has one place that you will need her for max damage but in terms of general usage um Timisha don't see a lot of usage because as a tank she's in a light bringer faction so very weak to the meta graveborn units which is the case for lucius as well so that's one problem with all the light bringers is because graveborn is so strong that even their tanks um, they melt quite easily right and secondly Timasia needs a little bit of build up in terms of her ultimate usage i think she needs to use her ultimate two times for her to be control immune and thirdly she she actually has quite a bit of damage as well so so like she's not actually a tank like like lucius is definitely a tank like his kit is that of a supportive tank but Timasia is more of a disruptor uh, a unit which draws attention away but uh, as I'll classify her more as an AoE damage dealer because she runs around, she does a lot of damage to everyone. So in this case, she's decent all around. Like I, I think she in fact can be really powerful if Graveborn had not been like that powerful in terms of like the power level, in terms of the meta. But uh, if you if you need an AoE damage dealer, you need a semi-tank that draws attention away from your frontliner. Timisha definitely does her job. Like she does her job pretty well as a AoE disruptor. Decent as a tank if you look at it from the way where she draws attention away from your side of the team, right? So that's why I'm putting her in the decent tier. And on top of that, in the late game, like I mentioned earlier, she's actually quite key in this boss known as Necro Drake for best Dream Realm damage. So that's a plus point for her. So generally pretty decent unit. Just not the best tank not the best aoe damage dealer so next one no uh, we have a uh, rice and uh, we have uh, our dear parisa yeah so these are the aoe damage dealer 
So Rise is a physical molar AoE damage dealer that does decent AoE damage. So as this unit is a newer unit, there's not a lot of people actively testing this unit, but from the screenshots that I was shared from the results that other people share with me, in general, I think Rise does decent damage as a damage dealer and uh, he, he does his job as an AoE damage dealer pretty well. And on top of that, this unit has synergy with the likes of Brutus as well as Kruger because he's a physical damage dealer. So he benefits from the physical defense debuff that these smaller units provide. So in terms of team building, that's one strength that um, our dear Rice have over Odal. But uh, in terms of overall power level, I'll say Odal is slightly higher, but Rice is definitely up there in terms of damage dealing. So that's why he's decent. Uh, in terms of meta, I, I wouldn't think of him as a meta unit, but as a unit which does damage, definitely. I think Rice does the job really well. So he's decent, definitely. Then we have Parisa. So Parisa has a, a single target bar for one unit. So that's one strength for her. And her ultimate is this flower power where she, she casts a skill and then uh, she explodes. And then if there's a lot of enemies close together, right, explode together and then she does a lot of damage there. But the thing about uh, Parisa, I think she needs a little bit of uh, synergy with uh, the likes of Iron, for example, to clump the enemies together for her maximal AoE damage. And her build-up can be a little slow, not the fastest, so that's why she's not meta. But I think if you have the time to build her up in terms of her damage dealing potential, in terms of the flower power stacks and stuff, she does quite a good damage. So overall very decent, just a little bit slow. So the slowness sort of hindered her from becoming meta or even a hero. So that's why she's only in the decent tier. But if you want to use her, definitely possible. Uh, then the next one. Okay, so we're going to talk about the supports next. Give me a moment. Okay, we have Koka as well as Niru. Okay, so I think, I think Koka is a relatively new unit. Uh, my impression of her right now is that I think her kit is quite sick, but just a little slow, similar to Parisa. And also because the Mauler faction right now doesn't have a lot of good units to synergize with her in terms of the arena setting. So Koka is a damage absorbing um, support where she generates a shield for the whole team and then the damage that is absorbed during this ultimate duration converts into a shield. I think she don't have any form of offensive buff. So Dream Realm wise, definitely you can use her if you need a little bit more survivability. Like generally, right? Like these units, they are definitely usable at one point or another. Or if you need a bit of survivability, the tanks as well as this uh, Koka, this kind of defensive support, they can do their job. But um, in terms of the late game, I think in terms of the team building, she's, uh, I feel restricted by the current pool of unit. I feel in the future, if we get really powerful molar units that can dominate the meta, she will definitely be bumped up in terms of general meta because she's going to see way more usage. Right now, just very little. Uh, a little bit too slow, but according to uh, my uh, whale friend who managed to max her out, he says that she's really powerful. It's just because of the meta. That's why she's not any higher, which I agree as well. So that's why she's in the decent tier. So same thing for Niru. Uh, Niru is this a uh, burst healer in the Graveborn faction. She heals a lot. She has the ability to turn your ally into spirits, which draws out their, their lifespan in battle. So generally decent support there. Yeah, but that's all I can think of, right? I think the reason why Nero is here is because uh, Grave 1 as a whole, right? They, they just have very, very powerful units. Like uh, that, I think if you're not powerful enough, you are you're not gonna be in the meta category so that, that's all i gotta say right so unfortunately that's that okay so that's for nero um next i'm gonna talk about the assassins okay units which are uh i'll say like snipers more arena centric so i'm gonna put barrel here i'm gonna put okay no not barrel here okay so why i'm not gonna put barrel here i'm gonna put sylvina here Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put Barrel here. Yeah, I'm just going to put Barrel here. So the reason, okay, first of all, I'm going to clarify why I put Barrel in this decent category. So Barrel, don't get me wrong, he's one of the strongest late game assassin in Arena. So this purple clown looking unit, he is one of the strongest late game Arena character. But he's just going to be useful in Arena. So 
uh, if you consider the amount of investment you need to pour into this unit right to get him to like his maximum potential he might not be as worth it as Sylvina, right which is also a very arena centric character so the reason why the two of them are here is less so their power level but rather just how restricted you are in terms of their usage because for barrel and sylvina's case i'll say if if you just consider them in terms of the arena spectrum right if i'm gonna make an tier list specifically to the game if if you're considering the arena spectrum i'm gonna put them on top because they are really good for arena but outside of arena i i think both of them just don't feel really good like i i don't see a lot of people trying to run them in battle drill i i i don't think their kits are meant for battle drill their kits are strictly meant for arena so yes they can be really strong in arena if you want to invest fully in them they can be meta in arena per se but just not very good everywhere else so that's why i can only put them in the decent tier generally not the best units you will think of if you think of a versatile all around unit but decent enough if you pour enough resources and love into them you can definitely make them shine in arena so so that's my that's my case for these two units like i think i think for for these two units per se uh i think for sylvina i think okay, maybe for barrel you can still use him in battle drill but i personally think that not i mean he's not that that powerful in battle drill so he won't be the first person you think of when you think of battle drill same thing for sylvina like they are just very arena centric they can be meta in arena but only in arena so i won't say that they are generally meta they are decent enough they are good enough in arena but not very good everywhere else so only a decent in my tier list so i guess uh that's for these two units let's see who else do i want to put into decent okay i think i think shakir is a generally decent unit as well like shakir is generally decent and uh okay i'm just gonna wind up the list right wind up the list with some of the damage dealers which i haven't talked about so i think yeah so i'm gonna gonna wind up the list with some of the units which i haven't talked about so uh let's start with the first one which is shakir so shakir is a model damage dealer that has the ability to transform into a wolf and deal aoe damage as well as control immunity um used to be a really good unit in dream realm when you're able to mano because he has a lupin aura which provides an attack buff as well as a damage reduction buff so you can actually uh position his ultimate so that as many units gets the buff as possible so if mano comes back to dream realm i think shakir is gonna go into the general meta tier but right now in dream realm he just bounces all around and his aura is not maximized so in terms of arena's case he also need a little bit of build up to get into his ultimate so i think generally decent unit all around like he's one of the prior example where he's good at a lot of things but just not that good as a meta breaker right so so that's what shakir and obviously i think the dream realm changing from mano to auto actually hurt him a lot like this unit definitely has way more potential as a manual unit there are some units which are just better as a manual manual meaning you can use their skills and timing and uh, you know like uh, throw it at the correct location so shakir is definitely one of the prime example but overall if you think about mola if you think about mola team building Shakir is definitely a prime unit you would want to use. So if, if, if in Dream Realm we do get back our manual game mode, he's definitely going to go up into meta. But as of what it is right now, generally a really decent unit. So that's for Shakir. Then we have uh, our dear Sisia. Okay, so this unit, right, this Sisia unit, is going to be the first S level that I think everybody is guaranteed to get. And it's definitely a unit which a lot of people recommend you to build her let me put it clear Cecilia is super overrated in my honest opinion because her skill summons a golem which deals damage which roots the enemy and she's able to use it as a semi frontliner tank but but in a late game nobody uses her let me put it this way think about it she's only good or she's good if her ultimate comes out but like I mentioned earlier, 
if there are units that are already not fast enough for the meta, what makes you think that Cecilia is going to be meta in the late game if she cannot get her ultimate out? So the issue with Cecilia in the late game is that she needs a little bit of energy manipulation support. She needs a little bit of push to get her ultimate out. So yes, she does become really powerful when she summons Mr. Charles on the battlefield. But early game, she looks fine, right? But in the mid to late game, when you're underpowered, your team cannot survive, you're not going to buy enough time for ultimate to come out. And in the late game meta, in Dream Realm, she doesn't have a team there. And in Arena, like she's just too slow there. So that's why she's just an overall decent unit. She's very, very powerful in the early... In fact, I wanted to put her in the hero to zero. But I think she don't deserve the hero to zero portion because she is still going to be useful. Just that she's not going to be like these all meta units that a lot of people are going to strong, strongly recommend her for. So I'm going to put her here. I'm going to put her here. Like she's one of the prime example of like looking really good in the early game, but her strength actually falls off. But the good thing for her is that if she does get her ultimate off, She's still going to be really powerful, by the way. Like, don't get me wrong. She does get her ultimate off. She's going to be really good. But the prime issue in the late game is that she doesn't have a team. She's too slow. Her ultimate doesn't come out before she even dies. So that's why she's in the decent tier. Okay, so that's why she's here. Um, Let's see. Who else? Who else? Generally decent. Okay, I'll put Rowan here. Rowan. Uh, this uh support over here has a lot of rise and fall so rowan is unique in a sense he's the only one in the pool that provides energy charging for the other allies so the the thing about this is that this skill is extremely powerful for skill cycling in arena i use rowan a lot in arena and i think he's really strong there but at the same time his weakness is also very clear because his stats are not very strong the whole bunch of griffborn units running around is just not friendly for for our dear uh, Rowan here so that's one thing for Arena and for Dream Realm you can definitely use him like you can use him as a support you can use him as a energy battery but Rowan doesn't do much damage on his own so like uh, you did rather have another support that uh, either do a lot of damage or provides way more buff compared to Rowan so that's why I can only put him in a decent tier, by the way. So Rowan as an early game unit, by the, by the way, is very, very powerful. Like this unit is one of the hero, but he's not going to become zero. So that's why he's in the decent category. So Rowan, pretty good early game. Uh, mid game, decent as well. Late game usable, but there's just a lot of answers to counter him. So uh, that's why I can't really put him in the meta status. Like, And he's not like a must have in the late game. So he's not going to become a hero. So that's why he's in a decent category uh yeah i guess that's pretty much it that's pretty much it for the decent category uh some might argue brian could be in decent as well but brian to me i'll say is zero to hero so i'll talk about why so next let's move on to the last two tiers i'm gonna start with the generally meta tier so these are basically meta units you want to run these are units that are start uh they are they are really strong at the start and they are really strong at the end as well so i'm gonna just throw them there right first one we're gonna put Rainer. So Reyna is one of those uh, all around good support celestial units because uh, his single target ability, I'm going to do another video to talk about all the celestial says Shippojin, but this unit is a must have for Dream Realm late game for maximum damage. Unfortunately, if you want to compete at the highest level Dream Realm, you need him. And in Arena, it's a very pesky unit on the offense in the late game as well. And this unit, even at the lower tier, can be really annoying in the arena as well. And you can also use his repositioning ability to give you certain advantages in the different game modes. In PvE, in story, in AFK challenges. So generally, Rainer's really good here. Uh, you won't really go wrong with Rainer. Then we have Smokey. So Smokey is the best offensive healer because he has an AoE heal, which provides attack as well as haste, which gives your other allies even more damage potential, right? So best molar healer, best offensive healer, enough said. Next, we have Heaven. Heaven is the best defensive healer. She has damage reduction, she has massive heal, she has a debuff removal, but she doesn't provide much offensive capability. So in terms of usage, Smokey is better in terms of the Dream Realm side, so PvE, where as long as he doesn't get disrupted 
as long as he gets his uh, buff going, as long as he gets his healing going, he's going to keep your whole team alive. He's good for Battle Drew as well. Whereas for Hewin, Hewin is more so for the PvP side, right? Damage reduction in PvP, the ability to heal everyone no matter where they are in the map, depending on their position, is invaluable. So these two, they are the best healers. And they are the reason why Fei is not good, because we have better healers up there. Even Nero is a decent healer. And the tanks that I'm going to talk about next, they are pretty sick. So the two tanks which I put in the generally meta is Aldea Granny as well as Torren. So Torren, hands down, best tank in the game. Best tank. Early, mid, late, best tank. But let's talk about why he's the best tank. Because he has the ability to revive himself, which is going to counter one of the most like good unit all around that people are going to invest which is odal right? i'm going to put odal right here here right so odal has an insta kill ability in the late game where there's only one unit that is immune to the insta kill right so odal insta kill somebody he's going to get the buff he's going to recharge his ultimate he's going to throw up so torrent's one of the best counter there and on top of that you need torrent for Froki or Croki, one of the Dream Young bosses, because that boss has an insta kill ability as well. So you want a unit that is able to have multiple lives, keeps on coming back, right? And tank on the front line. So Torren does the job really well there. And on top of that, his damage potential is actually really insane if your enemy runs like multiple melee unit, because his ultimate stores up all the damage that he takes and then just do a reverse like uh, counter and then just like do a lot of damage and then you kill all the melee units so generally Torre is the best tank hands down in terms of uh, a tank category generally meta next we have granny so some people might argue that you know like why is granny in the meta category is, is granny really that good granny is actually really good like granny has aoe control she has heal to keep herself healthy she has torn to draw attention to herself and granny had on top of that has the added perk of being available in the emporium shop so <coughs> give me a moment right so for torrent's case torrent is a premium tank so it might be very hard for you to get duplicate copies of him if you're not spending extensively if you're spending extensively it's obviously easy to get him maxed out but if you're not spending if you're free to play if you're low spender granny might actually be the better choice because you do get shots for her you can use her from the early to mid to late game and you don't actually get stuck in terms of building her up just because you can actually get her from the shop so very free to wait for any there and on top of that in the late game like i mentioned just now lightbringer is really powerful i mean uh the grave one which is this uh gray background units they are actually really really powerful so being a wilder's tank granny actually does a great job in the front line as a tank per se so this unit all around i feel that wilder's as a class is very powerful and Granny being the, the representative, the tank of the category, is, is quite good. Like all around, very, very meta. Uh, but the only issue with Granny is that I think she's not that much used in the um, Dream Realm. So that's a bummer. But I think every other game mode, Granny is definitely usable, right? You can use Granny in Labyrinth, Battle Drill, Arena. Like, yeah, like, like she is a really powerful tank that has a lot in her kit. And on top of that, she's backed by a lot of powerful meta wilder units. So that's why she is in the generally meta category. Like, very, very useful. I, after I've used her in my multiple accounts, I'll say Granny is quite decent as a, as a tank. So I'm going to put her here. And then, um, in terms of the generally meta. Okay, so uh, generally meta, I'm going to put uh, dear Odal. So this unit, right, some people might argue, ah, Zip, you're lying, ha, 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 Odao is not that strong in the early game, blah, blah, blah. Look, Odao is one of the best single target uh, damage dealer in the early game, and this unit is going to push you in your Dream Realm first time rewards. And those first time rewards is going to further accelerate your growth for your characters, giving you more resources, giving you more EXPs, more Dream Fragments to get more shots, etc, etc. Smoking, I mean, Odao in the early game is actually really powerful. Used to be way more powerful, but now still decent, right? So this unit, right, as the one of the best single target damage output. So really good for Dream Realm. Early, mid to late, really, really good. And 
this unit, once you unlock the EX ability, has the insta kill ability. So once your enemy hits a certain threshold with the ultimate on them, they just pop. So this insta kill ability basically negates invulnerability ability like Igor, like Brutus, or units that you know they, they can survive if you if you let them live on like a slaver of health, right? So Odal counters that and is useful. Right, even in the late game. So from early mid to late, Odal is going to be generally useful. Late game wise, I think his power level sort of falls a little bit, but I still manage to find uh, places where I can actually use this unit because instant killing, no matter which stage of the game, is going to be quite good, right? If you're able to use it correctly. So Odal, very, very good single target, right? If you unlock the EX with the instant killing ability, he's quite a decent AoE as well because you shoot the poison, poison one guy, kill, then the energy recharge, shoot the ultimate to another guy, kill, move on. So he does do decent AoE damage if you get the EX up. But in the early game, his role is more so as a single target damage dealer to push you through Dream Realm content. And one strength that Odal has is that he has a really long range. So positioning with Odal is quite easy. So that's one strength that Odal has. He, he, in fact, this is one of my favorite units because throughout all my accounts, I've been running Odal and he has been doing good for me throughout the different stages of the game. And I strongly encourage um, all the beginners to use him in your team. Like, he's really that good. So that's for Odal. Um, since we are on Mauler, right? The other generally meta Mauler is Kruger. So... Kruger, let's let's put it this way. This unit, he is quite essential for the Dream Realm game mode. Not that good in every other game mode, but in Dream Realm, he is one of the strongest debuffer. In fact, I think he is other than Rainer and uh Torrent. Yeah, Torrent has a debuff as well. So yeah, Torrent is just really powerful because he has tank, he has debuff, and he has a revival skill, and he can do damage. But for Kruger, Kruger is strictly meta in Dream Realm. But he's so meta that if you are not a whale, right, you will need him for your Dream Realm damage pushes. So I cannot put him in the Decent because he's way better than Decent in terms of Dream Realm. And uh, you will need him. Strongly encourage you guys to invest in him. Um, I don't think you need to go ham in terms of his tiers. You just need to make sure that Kruger can survive the damage of the boss so that you can keep the, the debuff active on the boss itself. Right? Generally, Right, you won't go wrong investing in Kruger for Dream Realm, but just take note that Kruger is not that good in like Arena and other game modes, but pretty much a must in Dream Realm. So I'm just gonna put him here in the generally meta. Um generally meta, like from the start to the end. Let's see, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put Vala here. So Vala, Vala is one of the exception to the Lightbringer class because this unit is strong in the early game decent in the mid game and very powerful in the late game as well in the arena in dream realm you can run her because she does have quite a bit of damage potential there uh she's gonna be the banner character on global release i think the first one so decent if you want to focus on lightbringer when you think of lightbringer i think vala is gonna be like this one unit that you think of so um yeah generally really really good a uh, lightbringer character and probably a unit that you want to invest in if you do want to focus in the light bring affection so that's for vala um let's see generally meta okay uh i kind of forgot about brian so brian i'll put brian somewhere here or here like i think i think brian is quite underrated in a lot of manner because uh brian actually is a really decent mage character like he he actually does a lot of damage from the start to the end as a damage dealer but i think in terms of dream realm because you have way better units out there so he might not seem really strong but brian's current placing in the meta is that he counters torrent really well he's one of those units that can bring down torrent really fast so torrent being one of the strongest tank around i think Brian being the unit that can bring down this tank really fast definitely has his plus point in the arena. In terms of Dream Realm, I think he's decent. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll drop him to decent. Okay, I'm not gonna say that he's meta all around. Like for Vala's case, you can run her in arena, you can run her in Dream Realm. But for Brian's case, okay, I'm gonna, yeah, Brian's gonna drop down to decent, unfortunately. Because Brian, 
he is a very very good uh mage damage dealer for the Walders faction but um he doesn't scale very well in dream realm so in terms of dream realm you're not going to use him a lot so not as meta there but if you need an answer to to our dear torrent which is this uh graveborn tanker over here then uh definitely a good answer like he has a stun deals a lot of damage can bring down graveborn pretty fast so pretty decent damage dealer but i yeah yeah that like so i'm just gonna put him in decent so that's that's for brian unfortunately so that's for the generally meta so yeah one more unit generally meta yeah generally meta so uh last two actually last two okay grave bond last two we have igor as well as viperion so let's talk about igor first right this uh, tombstone guy the guy standing on a tombstone so for igor's case right uh igor is a unit okay i'm gonna i'm gonna put igor there so you guys know who i'm talking this is igor by the way so i'm the one that moving is igor so igor is a really annoying warrior that actually tanks really well he jumps around on a tombstone it's really hard to kill him there's only two direct counters to his kit he has the invulnerability as long as there's tombstones on the battlefield so he generates tombstone when your enemy's hp falls below a certain threshold so very very annoying unit it just keeps on bouncing around very very annoying unit in afk sieges as well and there's only two direct counters which is odal as well as galita right so these two units has the insta kill ability which bypasses his invulnerability when he's on the tombstone so other than other than like when you're faced with these two counter right ego is basically a really really good tank to sort of draw attention away from your team very good early mid to late very very good for battle drill because his ultimate is an aoe ability that deals damage so he he's able to deal damage debuff the enemy and also sort of tank on the front line as well so generally very powerful unit and uh if you want to invest in him i think he's quite a good future proof unit as well because his kit is quite annoying if you don't have the direct counters he's just gonna survive for very long and on top of that right you're gonna Put him with other healers like heroin as well as damien then then he's gonna like drop to a certain hp get inbound bounce around heal himself and then gonna get healed by this healer and then what happens most of the time is that when you're playing against him right as an attacker right when you time out on your side right in arena you actually lose the match so that's just how annoying ego can be then next one is viperion so viperion from the start to the end is just a really good aoe damage the uh, mage and on top of that, I think recently he actually got buffed in terms of his legendary skill, which actually gives him haste, right? So haste up actually allows you to perform your stuff better. And Viperion has the ability to send out Vipers, which lowers the energy of the enemy. So in an AoE setting, in Arena, okay, maybe maybe just Arena. So I'm just going to put him in Decent as well, not generally meta, because in Arena, this unit is uh, busted. But in every other game mode, I think in Battle Drill, okay, you can use him. Not the best. Definitely usable. And in in uh, Dream Realm, not really. Because in Dream Realm, in case you guys haven't realized by now, most of the good Dream Realm units, they are not your AOE attackers. So that's why um, like I won't put him as a generally meta. Because like a uh, very good arena unit, but uh, I would say same category as Barrel as well as our dear Sylvana. Right, so Barrel purple the the purple clown unit sylvina the lady unit beside her as well as Viperion. they are really powerful arena units but i think in every other game mode they just doesn't shine as much so i'm not gonna put them in generate meta but they actually shine in those specific game modes that they are good at so i put that in the decent category so yeah that's uh pretty much it for the generate meta so generate meta units are units that are just really good all around they're just units that uh, from the start to the finish really really good you you will be like wow these units are so good and when you reach the late game this unit will be like wow they're still so good so that's generally meta then uh let's end off the tier list with the zero to hero units so skalita first unit so this unit skalita right um at the start it feels very zero-ish because at the start of the battle you lose a unit where she flies to the sky and then just do nothing and then provide a shield for your team and then you fight 4v5 and uh she will just come down afterwards and do some damage, slamming a floor, stunning an enemy. Not very spectacular. But this Celestial unit has insane late game prowess because her Supreme Plus skill provides a massive defensive buff which keeps whoever she's shielding alive most of the time. And on top of that, her EX weapon 
deals true damage once you unlock it and she has the insta kill ability similar to Oda. so any unit with the insta kill ability has the ability to reverse the match in arena very very powerful so i call her the reverse all kill queen because she's gonna shield herself in the air once she gets all her buff ready she bounces down stuns the enemy throws the ultimate she's gonna insta kill a lot of enemies there so pretty decent zero to hero unit but i gotta warn you guys that compared to reina she requires quite a bit of commitment so um and she is you can use her in dream realm in one of the bosses and she is a decent damage dealer all around but uh in arena she's gonna be the queen so so that's something that you guys might want to take note of but in arena right she's one of the most powerful units that saw the wheels right the the guy that got paragon 4 actually paragon for her first because he said that he just thinks that this unit is so strong there so he the first unit that he went for for paragon for which is the highest tier of unit in the game is galita so that's just how powerful this unit is in the late game so zero to hero at the start i think skyta is really weak like in fact the reason patch actually nerfed her early game because they shifted the defensive buff to supreme plus which is quite late game so that's for her then we have our dear caroline so this unit is a uh, mage debuffer, AOE control damage dealer. At the start of the game, right, I feel that Caroline as a unit just didn't stand out that much. Like I feel that yeah, her ultimate actually freezes the enemy and she has a snowball attack that deals damage and stuff. But her true potential comes when you unlock her EX weapon, when you get her ascension skill, when you get her legendary skill, because she become nuts. When you combine her with the other units that i'm going to talk about later like in the late game arena meta out of 10 teams that i see right now eight teams actually run her as one of the carries is insane like one of the best late game arena character and in in the event of labyrinth as well battle drill due to how much damage this unit deals right because the snowball damage actually increase the more you use them so her damage potential looks really insane in these game modes as well i use her personally one of my most stacked up unit right now very very powerful late game mage so uh definitely one of those characters that at the start is like wow shit this unit is so bad but late game wow she becomes another beast when you combine her with other units so that's my impression of caroline then uh the other i'm just gonna talk about all the wilders together so we have the old man arden we have the the cut healer damien and we have iron okay i'm gonna put iron next to to caroline because this caroline iron combo is freaking insane so iron is this rogue character that use the ultimate and suck everybody together at the start he's really weak because he doesn't seem very tanky and his ultimate doesn't seem flashy but when you unlock his ability to use the ultimate immediately with the ex weapon unlock and his ability to apply a magical defense debuff on the enemy when she uses the ultimate and his ability to increase the control to six seconds makes him an insane late game character in a lot of game modes right in battle drill in arena like come on iron is one of the strongest late game arena in the game this unit is is the prime example of zero to hero like he's like the mirror mirror of valen like <laughs> because 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 um iron in the early game is really weak like he he just doesn't shine as a unit they will become a beast but when he unlocks his full kit right he starts the battle off by using his ultimate and his and his ultimate has priority over artifact so so like uses the ultimate pulls everybody together and then they all get magical defense reduction and then your mage damage dealers just go ham like you guys can see where i'm going like really really powerful late game character then we have damien so damien is a really powerful late game character for two reasons because he's a healer that's able to keep on re-summoning his cut so his cut heal is actually very very optimal and on top of that he has the haste buff which speeds up the overall skills usage for the team so early game he's very frail because uh, the cut's hp is based off his hp so being a really weak character in the early game he, he doesn't seem like this character that will shine but in the late game this unit is one of the most meta uh, supports like uh he was used in lone wolf uh, very very good for battle drill as well as arena obviously dream realm side you can definitely try to run him as well but dream realm we already have smokey in the support section and we have kruger in the debuff section so you might not see as much usage for this guy next we have arden okay so arden's reason for being zero to hero is that this unit 
I'm not going to talk too much about him. He's basically uh, a control, a damage dealer, as well as a unit that synergizes really well with Iron because he's able to charge up his energy based on how much enemy is being controlled in the late game. So in case you guys haven't realized by now, like this zero to hero units, they have some sort of control element in the late game. Stun, stun, freeze, and then your root. So so late game meta or late game gameplay is quite um, control centric. And Arden is like this king of control because Arden's ability to charge his own energy per enemy per second of control makes him use his ultimate really fast so he actually becomes a like a Thor that summons lightning really really frequently in uh, AoE setting so he's good in battle drill AoE setting or the best AoE damage dealer and he's good in arena definitely I love him right now so he's this uh, hero in my heart right now so that's for the three wilders unit then next we're going to talk about the Mauler Seth so Seth is a warrior unit that has the ability to scale up his damage output the more enemies he kill right the more times he uses his ultimate his damage output is going to increase but the thing about all the warrior units or all the rogue unit at the start of the battle is that uh, at the start of the game right is that they are quite frail for Seth's case he has a little bit of defensive capability because when he's using his ultimate is inbound and on top of that he has lifesteal so he can sort of as long as he's able to survive as long as he's able to get his engine going this unit does really well very good for battle drill uh, in the past, he was actually used for Dream Realm as well, just because of how much damage you can deliver on him. Very, very good single target damage, but right now, probably not as good there. But in the late game, in Arena, he is the representation for the Mauler faction, because you will need him to snipe off some of the pesky uh, Wilder unit, which I talked about just now, right? Damien, Arden, as well as Iron, and he does his job really well there, once you have enough stats on him. So he's a unit that steams rolls on stats. So the, the stronger he is, the faster he will grow, the better he will survive, and the more damage he can deliver. So that's for Seth. And then last three, we have Audio Lightbringers, so different from the previous units that I mentioned, right? Uh, Merrily, Horin, as well as uh, Aldea, Cassidy, they are more PVE centric. So I mentioned multiple times that Graveborn, they are just really, really powerful. So the thing about Lightbringer is that they have really powerful units as well, but not necessarily in the arena because Graveborn dominates there and Lightbringer's kit as a whole just doesn't compete as well, except for maybe Vala's case. So in terms of uh, these three units, so Corin as well as uh, our dear Merrily, they are quite crucial Lightbringer Dream Realm units. Like in every Dream Realm team where you run Merrily, you can run Corin. So Merrily is this unit that gets true damage with the EX weapon unlocked. She hits really hard on the boss for Dream Realm. She's pretty much a must have for Dream Realm if you want to get best damage. And Dream Realm being a really important game mode in this game makes Merrily a hero unit in the late game. So that's for Merrily. And then we have Corin. So Corin's case, right, for Corin, this unit has this shielding ability. So he provides a little bit of sustain for your team. And on top of that, when you have his EX weapon unlocked, his damage potential is pretty decent as well. So late game, very, very useful. Like he's basically the upgrade for our dear Valen over here. So we have a Valen in hero. So we have a zero to hero for Corin. So Corin is the unit that I'm talking about. Like does decent damage, provides a little bit of shielding for your team as well as um, very mobile. So quite good for certain niches in Dream Realm. Then we have Cassidy. Cassidy is the queen of damage in Battle Drill. A uh, very, very powerful uh, mage damage dealer. If you do manage to get her up, and uh, yeah, like she's one of the best. Uh, like if it may, even if you use her in the arena, if you can actually make her work, she's quite decent there. So that's why she's a hero unit to me because if you can get her running, she's quite sick. But in most cases, she's more so in the PVE game mode because in the arena, I, I think Gravefall is just way too powerful there. So Lightbringer just doesn't have a spot, unfortunately. But then again, these three units, they are just really, really powerful PvE units to do more damage. So strongly encourage you guys to invest in them. I I'll say Cassidy, maybe, okay, the last unit, the last mage girl, she's not as important. Merrily and Corin, they are your top tier priority because they are very, very crucial for Dream Realm. You pretty much need them to be able to compete in terms of damage rankings. So invest in them. 
and yeah that's pretty much it for this tier list right so in conclusion this is my tier list i'm gonna put a clearer picture right uh, and large picture in front at the end for you guys to refer so this tier list is more so for people who want to know what units actually scales right units that are good in the early mid to late game they are your generally meta they are your decent units right and there are certain units which might not be really good in early to mid game but they are absolutely a must or just crazy powerful in the late game they are your zero to hero tier so yeah it, in all honesty as long as you're investing in your generally meta as well as your decent tier units you're okay but just take note that in the decent tier right in terms of the assessing category the last three unit that i'm gonna put on this list um our dear or uh, let's put it this way yeah the last three unit um they are more pvp centric right in terms of usage they might not be as good in pve i was reviewing through the whole thing i kind of left out one unit and that is none other than centrandra so she's the last unit in the walker tier i personally think that she can be really powerful in an anti like mage team cause her buff which gives more damage as well as defensive uh, magical defense buff for your team is quite useful but i feel that it's quite niche because it's against a uh, magically defensive teams and secondly i think in general she's uh, not very tanky so like i mentioned earlier with velen as well as Salazzo, as well as walker any unit that walks in the front line and it's not tanky there's a very high chance they'll actually die before they actually do anything so that's one issue is uh Sentendra. even though she does provide a really neat defensive buff for your team but i feel that it's kind of niche and it's not all that good so that's why she's in the walker tier so with that that's the end of this tier list right so if you want to invest in them just prepare just be prepared that they are they are okay and uh they they might not excel at everything but they are decent and uh there's one unit which i think a lot of people might disagree with me and that is cecia but in all honesty cecia is really not a must like she is really highly overrated in my honest opinion and i don't regret putting her in just a decent category because previously i thought she's really good but the more i proceed into the late game the more i play the late game game modes like she's just not seeing any usage and she's just so hard to slot into any teams just because of how slow her ultimate is so that's why she's right here so yeah that's pretty much it for this tier list thank you very much for tuning in do stay tuned for more afk journey related content more tier lists from other sources as well as more guides coming up Thank you very much and I'll see you guys again in my next video. Bye guys.